It's always a pleasure to see Peter uh, give his annual address every year and give us his thoughts on the market, where it's been, where it's heading. Um, and Peter always creates that for this conference, and it usually gets quite a lot of play in the media and in, um, in road shows uh, throughout the year. So for those of you that are lucky enough to see it here, you saw it here first. Um, next up, we have a very special guest, um, Jackie Rhesus from Square Capital, who's the head of Square Capital, um, is going to be interviewed here on stage. Um, and she's going to tell us a little bit about how Square approaches um, internet finance and what they're doing specifically for uh, among the very smallest entrepreneurs uh, in, the, in the country. So they operate in a space that is uh, very unique uh, and, and they do it with their own, their own technology and their own technology cap capabilities and their own data. So this is a, ve a very interesting angle for us to take this year and we're delighted to have her. Um, David Cox is going to be interviewing uh, uh, Jackie. Uh, and um, David is MD at Evercore and uh, in their financial services practices. So we're delighted to have them both here today. Let's give them a warm welcome. See you later. Hi, Rocky. Hello. Thanks to all of you for your time, and I guess to kick things off, Jackie, would you like to introduce yourself briefly and maybe give us a little bit of your background and what brought you to Square? Sure. Uh, so I'll be brief. Um, spent 20 years on Wall Street um, doing leverage buyouts at a very large private equity firm in Goldman. Um, worked at Yahoo as the chief development officer, have been involved in the board of Alibaba, um, the Fed, um, live in California. Great. Quick version. And I run um, Capital at Square and also uh, the people team. Great. So thank you for that. When the topic of financial inclusion is discussed, issues often focus around consumers, often in the emerging markets. Why do you think it is that small businesses have been left out of that discussion in the mainstream financial discussion in the, in the U.S.? So um, it's actually quite a problem. Um, and... Um, it's something that we would like to solve and is kind of core to the passion of Square, the overall mission of the company as well as for Square Capital. I think the challenge that small businesses have is a fewfold. Um, one, they have a hard time with the complexity of documentation needed for lending. So if on average it takes 25 hours in order to complete an application, requires lots of financial documentation. That is an incredibly complex, time-consuming process for small businesses. In addition to that, when you actually look at the 28 million small businesses in the United States, most of them are very small. And those small businesses, so the vast majority of them want loans that are less than $500,000 in order to help their business start and grow. And then you talk to the major financial players in the United States, and you understand the loan size that they're actually providing across the United States, and there's a complete mismatch between supply and demand. On one hand, you have these 28 small businesses who um, want very small amounts of credit, and yet you have these large financial institutions who are unwilling to loan less than a million dollars. And so therein lies the conundrum for um, 28 million businesses. And so when we look at what we do, our average loan size is about $6,000, and it's a very different product for businesses that largely do $250,000 or less in revenue than what a traditional bank can actually underwrite profitably. So it's a huge hole in the market, and hopefully a lot of the companies that attend LendIt are gonna be able to help solve that issue for small businesses. Great. <clears throat> I guess to, to build on that point a little bit, um, one of Square's objectives is to obviously include small business owners into the financial landscape and obviously started with payments. How does lending fit into that objective? Yeah, um, it, you know, the way Square was started was um, uh, it started with a philosophy of helping small businesses get into the financial rails of the, the payment system. And if you think back eight years ago, 
to very small companies, how many of those companies actually were able to take credit cards? Again, going back to this, the core of kind of United States Main Street of 28 million businesses. Um, it was a very arduous process um, that was complicated, required a lot of financial information and credit checks for a company, for a pizza shop, a hair salon, any of the local Main Street businesses just to take credit cards. And so Square started with payments at its core and then built a further ecosystem around point of sale, appointments, inventory management, payroll. And it's an ecosystem that helps small businesses start and run their business. Now, interestingly, the pain point that goes beyond that is that of capital, of credit. I have a business, but now I need capital in order to make it grow. I have a food truck, but now how do I finance in order to open up a location? And you can think about a bunch of use cases around invent buying inventory, opening a new location, funding supplies. These are very basic use cases that for small companies across the United States, they didn't have the supply of capital uh, before a lot of the companies who are here at Lended in the alternative financial market. And so what we ended up doing uh, for Square and for our ecosystem was to provide that capital as part of the overall Square dashboard and as part of the overall Square system so that we can help a company grow. They process more. We help them grow. And we really become a partner in their business as they evolve and grow over time. Can you maybe touch a little bit more on how the product has been designed to be more accessible um, for these businesses that have been traditionally excluded? And I guess you touched on average size. How might that compare yeah. to some of the competitors? Are there key characteristics of these loans that, that make them more tenable for small businesses? Yeah, it's a different, um, it's a different kind of product um, than others on the market. And it's um, got a few core tenants, um, speed, transparency, um, flexibility, and when um, what we end up doing is um, as part of 2.1 million merchants that sit on the Square platform, we are um, able to pre-underwrite and provide the opportunity to get capital and make it available to our 2 million merchants so that at any given time they can look at their Square dashboard and click on a loan offer. It's incredibly easy. It's there. It's in front of them. It's pre-underwritten. And so if you're a seller, again, going back to the pizza shop, the hair salon, you click on your dashboard, and within three clicks, you could have financing within 24 hours. You could choose the size of that financing, and you're given a few options um, so that you have full flexibility to decide as a small business what amount of capital you need at any given time. Then um, we offer the ability to um, uh, get paid back based on daily card sales. And so think about that flexibility and how different it is than a lot of other loan products where if you have a great weekend, you pay back more. If you have a really slow weekend, you're closed on Sundays, you pay back less. If you're a small business and you're helping to fund working capital, that flexibility is incredible. And it really is a a core feature of our product that enables small businesses to have the flexibility to move with the profile of their working capital. And so speed, flexibility, transparency, they're all kind of core features of the way we operate um, and have differentiated ourselves in the market. Great. And would you say that, I guess, a lot of these items that you just discussed are things that also differentiate you from your competitors? It's obviously a very competitive industry in the small business space, and just want to understand how you think about that relative to serving your small business customers as well as the competitive dynamic in which you're operating. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. The, the pent-up demand for small business loans is about $120 billion. And today, when you look across originations, in total, I think if you add up the entire fintech industry, it's probably $15 billion. And so it's really a drop in the bucket relative to the overall scale of credit opportunities for small businesses, which have really been left out of the system. And so when we think of our competition, we don't really think of it as anyone in this room. We think of it as people's friends, their family. You know, when the pizza shop is getting credit, they go to their cousin. 
And so as we um, translate what we do into use cases and the opportunity set, we really pay attention to where the needs are across a business platform more than we pay attention to any one competitor out there or any one product that might be in the market. It's such a gigantic market, and there, the needs across small businesses are so extraordinary, whether it be supplier financing, invoice financing, working capital, new locations, dealing with payroll. You really can see a breadth of products available um, that small businesses need, and we've really, across the entire industry, only um, tapped into a, such a small portion of that untapped demand. Great. One of the hardest things to do in financial services or for financial technology firms is to build and establish trust. Um, what do you do to, to, to build trust? What are some of the most important lessons learned around building the trust and gaining the trust of your customers? Yeah, I think trust and integrity is probably one of the biggest issues facing this industry. And um, it's one of the more important issues that we pay attention to. Um, I think we're very lucky. Square is a uh, trusted partner to a lot of our merchants. We are there at the moment when they're starting their business, and we're there as their partner across the ecosystem of what we offer to help them grow. That enables us to sit in a very good position in working with our merchants. In addition to that, if you think about our lending product, our goals are different than a lot of others in the industry. Our goal is to help a seller grow, totally aligned with a merchant's business, right? Our goal is not to offer a max loan size because we want that business to thrive. We want them to be able to afford what we're lending them. And so when we think about our product, our product is derived off of machine learning calculations that not only enable us to underwrite, but enable us to underwrite the right size loan for a merchant based on our, our view of their projected sales. And that's so critical in terms of building trust because we're able to be there to help them grow and to provide the capital that they need to fund their business. The last point I would make is that of um, transparency. When you go to take a loan from Square Capital, uh, the way we price the loan and the way we show it to our merchants is in a total cost of loan basis. By that, if you're going to borrow $1,000, you pay back $1,100. We couldn't be any clearer that there is one fee. It's a total price. There's no other fees. And we put it there crystal clear when a seller is choosing to take out the loan. And we think that level of transparency and simplicity and ease of understanding, if I borrow X and I pay back Y, I know what I'm getting. And I think that and the way we operate from a servicing point of view just puts us in a position where sellers see that we are a trusted partner to them and they know what they're getting. Um, and so we have that extended relationship. Great. <clears throat> Now, building on that point a little bit, I would be interested to hear what you're hearing from your sellers about the impact that Square Capital has had. I don't know if there's any good stories yeah. or things that you can convey about how this has impacted their business or their ability to operate their business. Yeah, I mean, we get great stories. That's kind of some of the fun of our day to day. We hear these great stories. Someone will tweet us a picture and it'll say like, you've just helped me open up my restaurant. Um, and they'll send us these great photos um, with really nice notes. Um, we get them all the time. Um, it really helps you appreciate when you stay true to a purpose and um, you, um, your goal is to help businesses grow. It kind of pays back in spades in some of these stories. And so um, we have quantitatively measured the impact that we have on our sellers. We've not actually released those numbers with regard to um, those sellers that actually take credit, how much of an increase in sales volume we're actually able to help them achieve. Um, but we actually have done that metric. Um, and um, and um, it, it makes us understand um, how the velocity of lending can be helpful from a working capital to small businesses. I guess the last point is we also look at um, NPS scores. And you know, we say this externally, our NPS score for Square Capital is 84. 
And when we think about that relative to what others in the industry are, it's fairly extraordinary. And I think it speaks to the partnership that we have with our merchants. So growing a financial services firm, particularly growing from a, a de novo business, has its own unique set of challenges. What would you say are some of the things that maybe you would have done differently or challenges that you faced in, in growing the business? Yeah, there, you know, this last year, um, with a lot of the changes uh, in the industry, whether it be regulation or just um, changes to the way companies in the sector have evolved, I think um, you know, it's made us quite cautious. Um, there are a few places where you know, we switched from MCAs to loans, for example. Um, and what we decided um, was that MCAs didn't have the flexibility that our merchants wanted. And so we wanted to be responsive um, to the needs of the seller. And, and we saw that on a day-to-day -day basis in our support calls in that our sellers would call us and the first thing they'd do is say, awesome year, we're so excited, or awesome month, I want to pay back my loan early. And they wouldn't understand that they can't pay back an MCA early. And so where we wanted to provide the benefit of the success of a merchant and their achievement, we actually weren't able to because of the design of the product. And so that was probably one issue where we had to alter course in 2016. We changed the nature of our product to a loan. And the loan enabled us to have the payback feature. Um, on the opposite side of demand, our investors also liked the form of a loan better. Um, and so we were able to meet the needs of both while making the product so much more flexible. And I think that was probably our learning of 2016. I think the second learning is that of um, always staying true to your purpose and um, making sure from an integrity point of view, um, you, you take a very aggressive stance on compliance, on regulation, on the way that we treat our sellers and work with our sellers as partners. And if anything, 2016 highlighted that and made us feel stronger about the positioning we had taken for Square and for Square Capital overall, that that had to be one of the most important things we think about on a day-to-day -day basis. So looking forward and looking at the industry more broadly, what, what would you say is next? What can we expect as the next big innovation in lending? And what changes do you think could be made to make lending more inclusive for small businesses? Yeah, um, we have only just started. I think this entire industry has only just started. And if you think about um, what a loan is, loans have been around for hundreds of years. And the fungibility of capital is incredible. At the same time, there are tenants of loans that are very unique in the way that we are addressing them in today's market. The notion of speed. What does speed mean in the context of loan and how is speed a competitive advantage is a dynamic that had not been thought of prior to the last five to 10 years. And I think speed as a strategy is incredibly important. I'd say the same thing for, for transparency and flexibility. If you think about the composition of those three features and abstract them into other loan products, I think you'll see an incredible amount of innovation in something that had been commoditized, again, as I started, for hundreds of years. And I think as we imagined loans two years ago, and we turned underwriting on its head so that you're pre-underwritten and you have a loan sitting there waiting for you, I think you'll see a lot of innovation around the notions of, uh, notion of speed, flexibility, transparency um, that really make lending totally different even than it is today. Got it. It's like we're starting to run a little bit short on time, but we're obviously operating in a very dynamic environment with respect to interest rates and credit quality. How do you think about managing your business in a, a dynamic environment? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've had rate increases over, the, over 2016. I think we're, we are prepared philosophically to uh, expect to see more rate increases over 2017 and going forward. Um, you know, just given uh, the positioning of the U.S. economy, GDP growth, inflation, um, and uh, unemployment. And I think given that, um, we think about it, yet at the same time, from a pricing point of view, it hasn't caused us to alter our pricing at all. 
And I think, if anything, our goal is to lower the cost of capital for our sellers as opposed to look at the impact of rate increases and actually assume we have to increase. And so we would assume over time we have the ability to lower cost of capital just based on the scale that we achieve. Um, and I think you will, you will see others in the industry um, be in a position to do the same thing, hopefully, um, as the industry scales and is able to use the benefit of capital markets and other financing vehicles to operate at the scale um, that we need to operate at. But I, you know, I would expect there to be an increase um, in rates over the next few years, and I think we're all going to adapt to it. I also, interestingly, I don't see small business being as impacted as big business because small business in general is net savers. And so when you think about where credit typically has an impact, it's on those that are net borrowers in the um, net borrowers in the credit system. And so as a net saver, where companies have not yet had access to credit, it puts them in a position where they are more cash positive and therefore less yield sensitive than others in the economy. And so just as we think about small business relative to, to big business and the market we operate in from a macro point of view, we actually think it'll be a pretty healthy market to operate in. Great. Well, it looks like we're just about out of time. I'd just like to thank you so much for your time. Thank I found you. this to be extraordinarily insightful thank and you. helpful. So. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Onward.